and Freeholder Gill, will you please lead us in the salute? before me certification from the clerk that this meeting is in compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act. Uh, roll call, Madam Clerk. Freeholder Beasley, absent. Freeholder uh, Bobadilla. Here. Freeholder Clark, absent. Freeholder Gill. Here. Freeholder Johnson. Here. Freeholder Luciano. Here. Freeholder Owens. Here. Freeholder Vice President Seaball. Here. Freeholder President Watson. Are you here? Um, Freeholder Gill, as the District 5 Freeholder representing the Township of Bloomfield, so I ask that you bring offer greetings to the attendees on behalf of the board, and also would you please identify and invite any Bloomfield elected officials in attendance to address the board. Freeholder Gill. Thank you, Madam President. Um, good evening. It's great to see everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, this is always a great opportunity for uh, the Essex County Board of Chosen Freeholders uh, to bring county government uh, up close and personal to the residents of the 22 communities uh, that we represent. Uh, we have the pleasure and distinct honor of being in the great township of Bloomfield, as you've mentioned, Madam President, uh, one of the five towns in the fifth uh, freeholder district. And I think anyone who is uh, driving around uh, uh, or came here today and drove through downtown Bloomfield know that there's definitely a renaissance uh, happening here uh, in this township. It's a township that has had uh, strong leadership and continues to have strong leadership. And uh, I know here on the Board of Chosen Freeholders and at the county level, we want to be a part of the renaissance uh, in any way that we can that's happening here uh, in this great township. Um, we have with us, I'm actually going to um, ask uh, Mayor Michael Venezia uh, to come up and bring greetings. I also see in the audience that we have two members of his governing body, which I will give him the, the, uh, the privilege of, of introducing. But um, Michael, as we know, is uh, a new mayor uh, who has hit the ground running and has been a, uh, a great partner uh, with county government um, as he moves uh, this great township forward. So with that, uh, Michael, great to see you. Mayor Michael Venezia. Thank you, Freeholder. Good evening, Madam President. I just want to welcome everyone to Bloomfield. Like uh, Freeholder Gill said, we have a lot going on. We have $400 million worth of private investment going on in our downtown right now. So we're very happy about that, and we're very happy to host you guys tonight. With me, I have Councilman Carlos Pamaris and Councilwoman Martina Davis. So hope everyone has a good meeting. Now, hopefully you're not out too late. All right. <laughs> Thank you. And thanks again for the warm welcome. Uh, Madam Clerk, are there any transcripts to be approved? Uh, Madam President, there are two. Uh, conference meeting April 16th, 2014, and board meeting April 23rd, 2014. Uh, Freeholders, do I have a motion and second to approve the two transcripts? I move. Moved by Freeholder Johnson. Yes. And second by? I'll second. Second by Freeholder Bobadilla. Um, roll call, Madam Clark. A Freeholder Beasley, absent Freeholder Bobadilla. Yes. Freeholder Clark, absent Freeholder Gill. Yes. Freeholder Johnson. Yes. Freeholder Luciano. Yes. Freeholder Owens. Yes. Freeholder Vice President Siebel. Yes. Freeholder President Watson. Yes. So moved. Okay, let's move to the public comment session on agenda items. If there's any member of the public who would like to comment on agenda items, please come to the microphone, state your name, affiliation, and you have three minutes to speak. Public comment session on agenda items. Okay, Madam Clerk, let the record show that there's no one wishing to speak at this time. Um, if there's any member of the public who would like to speak on any item, of uh, any issue, Please come to the microphone, state your name and affiliation, and you have three minutes to speak. And you can speak on any issue. Okay, Madam Clerk, 
There is no one to speak uh, on the record. Let the record reflect that there's no one wishing to speak at this time. And for the record, Madam Clerk, freeholder Clark is present. Um, Madam Clerk, are there any topics of discussion? Um, Madam President, yes. Uh, today, this evening, uh, Madam President, Executive Director Deborah Collins of the Office of Small Business Development and Affirmative Action will present her first quarter report of 2014. Okay, Mr. Shiela, please introduce Ms. Collins to present her report. Uh, yes, thank you, Madam President. Um, Ms. Collins uh, held her committee meeting earlier in the week uh, with the Affirmative Action Committee and uh, she's prepared to pre pre present her entire report to the entire board, and this is our first quarterly report given by uh, Ms. Collins. I'll step away and ask Ms. Collins to step forward. Okay, um, Ms. welcome Ms. Collins, um, please proceed. Good evening, Madam President, members of the Board of Chosen Freeholders. For the record, I'm Deborah Collins, the Director of Small Business Development and Affirmative Action for the County of Essex. You can have before you a copy of our first quarterly report for 2014. And it is my pleasure to present this report on behalf of the Essex County Executive. It covers the period December 19, 2013 through March 27, 2014. In sum and substance, it chronicles our outreach efforts and sets forth the county's contracting and procurement activity for the applicable period. The first section is devoted to reviewing, analyzing, and documenting the purchase orders or contracts for goods and services that small, woman-owned, minority, and disadvantaged business owners have provided to the County of Essex during this first quarter. We calculate the overall private contract dollar amount and the portion of it that went to our target population. In addition, we provide a description of the goods and services that the county procured throughout the applicable period. The second section of the report covers major public works and, co and subcontracting activity for which the federal government or the county has established aspirational participation goals for women and minority-owned businesses. The remaining sections of the report chronicle our outreach efforts through programming tailored to meet the needs of startups as well as established businesses. So without further ado, I direct your attention to page two for overall monetary achievements. This quarter, the county spent $79,622,680.17 in private contract dollars. Small, women-owned, and minority businesses received $38,204,519.18, or 47.98% of the total spend. However, it does bear mentioning that these results include a one-time lump sum payment to Aetna Life Insurance Company, for employing an eligible retiree health benefits in the amount of $21,349,590. However, the breakdown of, uh, by business classification is as follows. Small business enterprises received $36,636,716.60 or 46%. Minority business enterprises received $6,126,811.76 or 7.7%, and women-owned business enterprises received $2,525,768.72 or 3.2% of the total percentage awarded to this population. We go on to mention to you the largest contracts um, which were awarded this quarter, but you may peruse this uh, appendix at your own leisure. It's Appendix A, listing approved contracts for the period December 19, 2013 through March 27, 2014. That's Appendix A. Now, as you know, the county does not have a set-aside program requiring contractors to establish mandatory goals on public works projects. Uh, however, parks and public works projects, however, in the fourth quarter last year, the county awarded a contract in the amount of $7,553,000 to Bismarck Construction, a minority business enterprise, to construct the education center at Turtleback Zoo. As of this writing, we've calculated a 8.2% participation rate of women-owned and minority businesses on this project. Specifically, uh, $624,800 has been awarded to these two classifications. And at Appendix B, you will find a chart listing subcontract activity on the Education Center construction project at Turtleback Zoo. 
Uh, let's see. We further noted in our annual report, so I'll not go over it in great and gory detail, that the county awarded the contract in the amount of $8,329,000 to Brockwell and Carrington contractors to construct the new public works building. Uh, to date, the total percentage of minority and women-owned subcontracting participation on this project is 3.8%. <coughs> I mentioned a little bit while ago that the county awarded a contract in the amount of $25,915,389.50 to New Prince Concrete Construction Company Incorporated. It's a small business enterprise that's going to perform the traffic operations and roadway improvements on the so-called S-curve project. The federal government, that is through the Federal Highway Administration, signed a 12% disadvantaged business enterprise, that's what DBE stands for, GOAL, to the South Ar uh, Orange Avenue Traffic Operations and Roadway Improvement Project. Although the goal established by the federal government was 12%, to date, we, ha we understand from our public works colleagues that the actual participation rate is 18.4%. Among the DBE, or Disadvantaged Business Enterprise subcontractors, MD subcontracting, sorry, contracting received the largest contract award in the amount of $2,636,930. If you look at Appendix D, you will find a subcontractor log, which we received from Public Works, going through the current activity for the two categories of minority business enterprises and women-owned business enterprises. In connection with the S-curve project, the county also awarded a contract in the amount of $3,634,155 to KS Engineers, a minority business enterprise. It's also classified as a small business enterprise to provide engineering inspection services. We go on to talk about additional accomplishments this quarter. We capped off our participation on the 2014 New York, New Jersey Super Bowl Host Committee Business Connect Board with two small business related activities, including a celebratory event on January 29th featuring, it was a leadership forum, forum featuring regional and nationally renowned brand leaders. But since the publication of our annual report in 2013, we have learned that another small business owner, a minority business owner based in South Orange received a contract in connection with the Super Bowl as well. That's Eclectic Catering, owned by Carol Thompson. You're familiar with Carol Thompson. She's actually done work for this board. Uh, she actually mentioned to me that she had provided uh, several thousand crab cakes for a party in connection with the Super Bowl. So we were happy to learn that yet another Essex County-based business received uh, some, a, a contract through the Super Bowl. Uh, at page five, I talk a little bit about the technological progress that we've made. We launched our very first e-letter, e-newsletter, with a reach of over 1,131 subscribers. These are individuals who are already in the database that our office maintains. We plan to launch a hard copy of the publication to extend our reach beyond the business owners who are registered with the county. We continue to initiate outreach to individuals, groups, and organizations in order to expand our network of minority business owners. And we've done so not only through our work on the Super Bowl Business Advisory Connect Board, but in connection with some of the other entities throughout the county. Uh, in the area of providing technical assistance to help business owners gain necessary certifications, financing, and bonding, we continue to offer this level of support that is access to capital and bonding uh, to business owners. In fact, on March 27th, we offered an introduction to estimating led by Cindy Malinchak. Cindy actually is the owner of environmentally based Green Building LLC, a WBE certified firm. Uh, you may recall that she was a former participant in the Essex County Bonding Readiness Program and she's grown her business as a result of it. Her workshop explored the elements of winning a winning estimate, putting together a winning estimate, focusing on the use of construction industry tools and software. We forged a new relationship with Santander Merchant Services, a first data alliance devoted to creating credit card processing programs that accommodate the needs of small businesses. In fact, they actually uh, led one of the seminars that uh, constituted the financial, financial services program that we ran this quarter. We're still uh, looking into the feasibility of partnering with a Newark-based organization called Forward Ever Sustainable Business Alliance, and we'll report more about this in subsequent quarters. Last but not least, we established a relationship with the Federal Reserve Board. We actually had already been in contact with them, but we built on that relationship. 
in connection with an initiative focused on surveying the small business community in the region to assess their financing needs. And the survey's findings indicated uneven cash flow, accessing loans, and applying for credit. Uh, and in fact, this is what led to, or really it was the impetus for our launching a financial literacy program. And we were very, very pleased that we were able to engage in dialogue with Dr. Bob Lee, who hosts a radio program in WBLS and WLIB. So we were able to get some traction that way. But before I end, I do want to mention something that I stated last night to Freeholders Johnson and Owen at our Affirmative Action Subcommittee meeting, and that is the financial literacy program is absolutely critical for all of our businesses. And we anticipate hosting it again next year, and we certainly would welcome you to refer to us any business owners who actually need this help. It's my opinion that they all need this kind of preparation in order to increase capacity. That said, it's been a very productive first quarter and we look forward to building upon new initiatives as we continue putting Essex County first. This constitutes our report. I look forward to taking any of your questions. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Collins. And before I ask the board for questions, um, I would like, uh, it's my understanding that people would please be, um, that could not attend the meeting and Freehold Johnson chair the meeting. So Freehold Johnson, would you like to add in, uh, any comments? Yes, through you, Madam President. Um, we, af, af, as of the things that she has discussed during the course of, the, of, of her presentation, we also were talking about how we can get more <coughs> of our small businesses in our corridors and things involved and engaged in the process. And um, Mrs. Collins has volunteered herself to uh, go out into the vineyards with us again, as we did a couple of years back, and we're starting to try to develop some of the business corridors in some of our urban cities that really need the help and need to flourish. Because as you know, when you drive through the South Orange Avenues, through the Chancellor Avenues, the Lions Avenues, and things of that nature, you see that even during the daylight hours, a lot of the greats are down, and there's no businesses going on in these. And, uh, I think to stimulate the economy and to stimulate more jobs and things of that nature for, we have to do more with what we have. So to add on to what she was saying, uh, I think that the report was very well. I think that there's some progress, but as you know, some is not enough. We need to reach higher. And um, I think that we're on our way to getting there because uh, most of you who have been on the Freeholder Board from the very beginning know where we came from. I came in in 2008 and I've seen the progress from 2008 to now and I can imagine by 2028 what it would be like if we keep moving in the same direction that we are. Thank you. Uh, do you have any questions or comments? Vice President Siebel. Thank you very much. Uh, Deborah Collins, you do such a wonderful job. Your quarterly report is excellent and it keeps us informed. I remember when we didn't even have a small development, business development and affirmative action committee. And I think we've come a really long way here in Essex County and in the state of New Jersey. And I would say that that's really because of all the wonderful work you're doing. And I might just add that recently, the freeholder president, Blonnie Watson, and I attended a um, do you want to call it a digital workshop? Yes. What was it called? A digital marketing. A digital marketing um, meeting. Seminar. A seminar sure. at McLoon's, which was so well attended. There were so many people there, and it was really very, very interesting. And it really made me feel proud that you are doing so much for Essex County. I felt really good about it. So thank you so much. Thank you, Freeholder Siebold, and we thank you for your continuing support. It's wonderful to look up and see uh, Madam President and you in attendance. It, it really, I think, encourages our business owners, and they never fail to remark upon uh, your commitment to this initiative. So we thank you for your continued support. They were support. wonderful. Okay, additional questions, Freeholder? Freeholder yeah. I just have one question. Um, from the the events that you've had, um, one where you paired, not paired, but where you have actually had vendors um, uh, come and meet some of the um, business, business people to see if there would be a match 
um, uh, that event and then your, your most recent events, um, I think where it was a similar kind of a, a symbiotic kind of relationship where people could actually mix and mingle with people who could possibly, who, who they, who, with whom they could possibly do business. Um, what was the outcome, do, as far as you know? Did anybody, were there any connects made as a result of those um, events? Has anybody actually gotten contracts as a result of that? Uh, I can get those figures for you. People do get contracts as a result of it, but they're not necessarily with the county or the municipalities. For example, Brockwell and Carrington, that's working on the Public Works Building, reached out to us and said, provide us with a list. We're always looking for subcontractors, not necessarily for the DPW building, but for other work that we're doing in the state of New Jersey. So we don't have those. I'd be happy to try to collect what we if you can could, if you. Could, you. G if you could find that yeah. out, because I always like to know what comes of the events, because the events are, are, are nicely done. They're well attended. Um, they're classy events. Um, the food is always tremendous, um, but I, at the end of the day, what you want to see is whether or not that connection was actually made and someone actually got a contract as a result of it. So if you could provide that um, information for us, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. My pleasure. That I've attended. It appears to me that the vendors come for more than just getting a contract. Um, the last meeting, I think we talked about how they could sell their business, ways to get the word out, ways to let other people know exactly, uh, find out about their business. And I think that digital workshop was excellent because that's what everybody's doing. They, they, now everybody's on, 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 on Twitter and Facebook. And, and that workshop sort of like prepared them on how to put their information on Twitter, how to sell their business through um, some of the other type of digital, excuse me, digital um, areas that they can make their, their businesses be heard and seen and share it with other individuals. And also, I mean, the financial workshops, excellent, because I might, um, can get a contract, but I may not know how to deal with the finances of my business. So um, I, I just want to, my explanation and my way of, when I attend the workshops, I see more than just them coming to get a contract. I see <coughs> the very small businesses learning how to be a good business person, how to improve on, on their businesses. And maybe I'm, I didn't, that's what I'm getting out of it when I attend. And I try to stay as long as I can because I'm, I don't have a small business, but I just love hearing um, the comments coming from the audience and how excited they are when um, the presentations are made. I do want to make two comments, and I, I am going to give them a little bit of publicity. There are two distinct businesses that I can think of right at this time, and I want to mention them because they deserve mention. Iris Communications is a business, a marketing business that started in 2011. Barbara Bochis, who's the owner, now does the county's marketing for the Parks Department. That's awesome. She's only been in business for two years. How did she find out about it? She came to one of our events. Suburban Consulting it, uh, actually is a professional services engineering firm that found out about work at the county and actually received the contract because they attended our RFP workshop. That actually gives me an opportunity to talk about the upcoming RFP workshop every year. And uh, this is, of course, I want to thank the Public Works Department for this partnership. Every single year, at least for the last five years, two engineers from Public Works have volunteered their time to go through the RFP process that's coming up on June 14th. We invite you all to attend and share the word. And what's so awesome about this event is that last year, Suburban Consultant Consulting came to the event and said, if we had not been at this RFP workshop, we would not have gotten a contract. And I want to manage expectations. I'm not going to come back with huge numbers because to your point, uh, Madam Freeholder, it's not always about getting the contacts and the contracts. At the end of the day, just as the business owners told us when we conducted the disparity study, what they're really looking for is access and opportunity. And we provide it like nobody's business. So I want to thank my staff. Uh, Wes Coleman, Tammy Marshall, because they do the work of 20 people 
and pulling this together, and I certainly could not do this work without their support, the support of the administration, and the support of the county executive. Failing support to allow us the leeway to be creative and to come up with these ideas and then to support them and bring these reports to you. So again, uh, congratulations to Suburban Consulting and Iris Communications for being examples of how networking and attending these outreach events made a difference in the growth of their business. And thank you. I try to attend as many of the workshops as I can because it is educational. I learn, I meet a lot of small business people, individuals, and I just, I, I, I just enjoy it. So and thank you for your um, continuing uh, 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 work with the county and certainly we can appreciate what you and your staff, what you're delivering to our uh, constituents each and every day. Because you know what, everybody can get a contract with the county, but certainly they could take the information that they have in growing their businesses and move to other areas to get contracts. That's what I like about it. Because we're preparing them for more than just Thank you. My pleasure. So thank you again for your report and for continuing to move us closer to our ultimate goal. Just keep up your excellent work, and thank you for being here this evening, Ms. Collins. My pleasure. Thank you. Okay, um, let's move to the public hearing on ordinance number 0-414-0006. Deborah, please read the ordinance. Um, ordinance uh, number 0-2014-00006. Ordinance naming the Concourse Hill Welcome Center in Essex County Branch Brook Park as the Barbara Bell Coleman Concourse Hill Welcome Center at the Essex County Branch Book Park in honor of Barbara Bell Coleman, co-chair of the Branch Book Park Alliance. Um, I hereby declare the public hearing on ordinance number 0-2014-0006 6 open. If there is any member of the public who would like to comment for or against this ordinance, please come to the microphone, state your name and affiliation for the record, and you have three minutes to speak. Do we have anyone from the public at this time? Mr. Polly Vecchio, uh, let the record show that there's no one from the public wishing to speak on this ordinance. Um, Madam uh, Clerk, Mr. Polly Vecchio, where is Yes, I'm, I'm down here. Oh, you're behind this <laughs> Okay, do you have any questions or comments? No. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. McInerney, no questions, comments. We hope that you have any questions or comments at this time. No questions. Uh, representing District 1, and uh, you know, we're right in the heart of Branchbrook Park, and I can tell you that uh, Barbara Bell Coleman is an outstanding uh, steward of the park and uh, <coughs> the conservancy, and if it were not for her, the park would not be in the shape that it is today. Absolutely. So this is well deserving. Thank you, Freeholder. Okay, do I have it? Freeholder, uh, Vice President Siebold. Thank you. Uh, I agree so much. I've known Barbara Bell Coleman for many, many years now because the Branchbrook Park Alliance wouldn't be what it is today without Barbara Bell Coleman. She does such outstanding work that we're very lucky we have someone such as Barbara Bell Coleman to do this work. Okay, Prehoser, I have a motion and a second to close the public hearing on ordinance number 0-2014-0. Oh, 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 oh. I'll second it. I'll second it. Um, do I have the same move and second to approve the ordinance? Okay. Um, thank you. Freeholder of Vice President Siebel? Yes. Uh, Freeholder Owens? Yes. Freeholder Luciano? Yes. Freeholder Johnson? Yes. Freeholder Gill? Yes. Freeholder Clark? Yes. Freeholder Bobadilla? Yes. Freeholder Beasley is absent. Freeholder President Watson? Yes. So moved. Move to the public hearing on ordinance number 0-2014-0007. Please read it. Okay. Ordinance uh, number 
O-2014-00007, bond ordinance providing for construction of a parking garage at South Mountain Recreation Complex by the County of Essex, New Jersey, appropriating $11 million and therefore and authorizing the issuance of $10,475,000 bonds or notes of the county for financing such appropriation. Okay, um, I hereby declare the public hearing on ordinance number O-2014-00007 open if there's any member of the public who would like to comment for or against this ordinance. Please come to the microphone, state your name, information for the record, and you have three minutes to speak. Okay, um, Madam Clerk, let the record show that there is no one appearing to speak on for or against this ordinance. Mr. Pottavecchio, do you have any questions or comments? Okay, Mr. McInerney, question, comments, none. Freeholders, do you have any questions, comments? Freeholder Clark. Step one. Um, is the $250,000 cost of issuance included and rolled into this? Uh, three, three, Madam President, I believe the, uh, the $11 million includes that. Includes the cost of issuance. Yes. No questions, no comments, freeholders. Um, do I have a motion and second to close the public hearing on? Thanks, thank you, Madam I'm sorry, President. I apologize. Uh, continue. Just, just a comment through you, Madam President, and. Um, you know, intent, I intend to support this ordinance, um, but I do just uh, want to put on the record um, that um, the um, for me there's uh, a level of trust extending the administration to the administration based on the performance of what's going on at South Mountain Reservation. This is to agree a certain amount of debt <laughs> that we're encumbering, and no matter what it is, debt is debt, and. Um, in order to uh, pay that debt back, um, you know, we, uh, and I know we will continue to have the progress that we have, uh, both at the South Mountain uh, Reservation and the zoo and et cetera. So I know this is a need, um, but uh, at the same time, um, you know, I want to make sure and reiterate that um, I hope the administration continues um, its efforts to make that uh, complex the premier place that it is uh, today. Um, do I have a motion and second to close the public hearing on ordinance code 2014 0 I'll move it. Do I have the same mover and second to approve the ordinance? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, roll call, Madam Clark. Freeholder Beasley, absent. Freeholder Bovadia. Yes. Freeholder Clark. Yes. Freeholder Gill. Yes. Freeholder Johnson. Yes. Freeholder Luciano. Yes. Freeholder Owens. Yes. Freeholder Vice President Siebel. Yes. Freeholder President Watson. Yes. So moved. Okay. Better part, let's move to the introduction of ordinance number one. Please read it. Introduction of ordinance number one. Guarantee. Uh, ordinance of the County of Essex, New Jersey, securing the Essex County Improvement Authorities not to exceed $68 million project consolidation revenue refunding bonds series 2014 for the purpose of providing additional security therefore and determining certain other matters in connection therewith. Ordinance number, introduction of ordinance number one. I'll move it. Second by Freeholder Bovadia. Um, Mr. McInerney, do you have any questions or comments? Sure, I'm sorry. Madam President, we went uh, through this last week. It includes Ordinance number one, ordinance number two, and ordinance number three. 
It's a $68 million revenue refunding bonds for series 2014. And what it effectively does is refund existing bonds <clears throat> and saves the county over a period of, I believe it's close to 10 years, $9.2 million. Um, there's very little saved in the 2014, roughly 200,000, and approximately, approximately a million to uh, every year in savings thereafter. I had a request from the administration, the cost of issuance, which I, I did receive, <clears throat> and the cost, in my estimation, are reasonable. The bond council fee and the financial advisor's fees, which we approved at a maximum of, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, $80,000 or 60885 fees. Um, everything else in this, uh, in the cost of issuance, including the rating uh, fees for Moody's, the printer's cost, the auditor cost, the authority financing fee, um, the trustee council, the escrow agent, uh, all told, looking at them individually, including the verification agent of 5,000, uh, these, these all be reasonable given the size of the issue. So again, this, um, this refunding saves the county not on a present value basis, but on an actual real dollar basis, over $9 million. It's one of the largest savings I've seen in a refunding in my time here. Freeholders, question. Mr. Polybecchio, before I ask the freeholders for questions and comments, do you have any questions? Okay, very good. Questions, comments, freeholders, freeholder Clark. Mr. McInerney, could I just um, ask you to reiterate and from the amortization schedule that you, you just kind of went through, we're not going to see much of our savings now or well, next year, but when will, when will the majority of that $9 million actually be, be felt or seen? What, what has happened, the way it's been structured, um, is that after in 2014, there's a nominal amount, 200 and some odd thousand. I don't have the schedule in front of me. After that, every year, it's the same amount of savings. It's been taken ratably over the term of the bonds, which is $1.2 million each year thereafter, until it equals 9.2. 9 and so you'll, you'll see um, one, approximately a million in change each year in debt service savings or savings. That is absolutely correct. On this bond issue, yes, absolutely correct. Okay, and how will that affect, affect budgets annually? It will actually reduce the cost of debt service and allow us to maybe, you know, we're, we are adding on additional debt, but this helps us absorb those additions without any, without any large increase in our annual debt service. $1.2 million is a nice reduction to have. Right. Um, because that's, that's, the, that's where I was kind of trying to get at. We're, co we're constantly issuing debt, but if we're also reducing it at the same time, the question is, are we reducing it at the same rate that we're um, issuing it, and is it a wash, or at, are we actually going to see a savings? Because I think that's what the taxpayer would want to know. There, there's a whole uh, projection that was done by the administration that's updated from time to time that when we went to this $20 million limit cap, uh, self-imposed cap, uh, a year, um, we would see some reduction in debt service. However, give it, it all depended on how much we added. However, the, the thought was we would all only add $20 million. The thing is, you just never know when the 20 minutes authorized and when it becomes a bond. You could authorize $20 million in bonds, doesn't mean you're going to spend it the next day. You could spend it the next, maybe it takes three years to spend it, and maybe another year to turn it into long-term bonds. All I can say is from this $68 million refunding, we are seeing significant savings that I don't want to give the opinion that debt, annual debt service uh, of, the, uh, of the budget, of our operating budget, will actually decrease, but it will have a substantial impact on any increases that we're adding on as we approve additional bond ordinances. Okay, and, and the savings that we can get off of these kinds of refunding is, is only on debt that's already been permanently financed. That's correct. 
debt that ha debt that is being issued is already being issued at the lower rates that now exist right. that allowed us to do the refunding. Exactly, because we couldn't do it if it was still in a in a state of plus work. Correct. It, it would, in an issue of state. Okay. Thank you. Additional questions for you, Aldous? No additional questions or comments? Um, roll call, Madam Clark. Vice President Siebel? Yes. Freeholder Owens? Yes. Freeholder Luciano? Yes. Freeholder Johnson? Yes. Freeholder Gill? Yes. Freeholder Clark? Yes. Freeholder Bobadilla? Yes. Freeholder Beadsley? Absent. Freeholder President Watson? Yes. So moved. Okay, let's move to introduction of ordinance number two. Um, Madam Clerk, please read the ordinance. Introduction of ordinance number two. Guarantee uh, ordinance of the County of Essex, New Jersey, securing the Essex County Improvement Authorities not to exceed $2 million airport revenue refunding bond series 2014 for the purpose of providing additional security, therefore, and determining certain other matters in connection therewith. Okay, freeholders, do I have a motion and a second? And this is the introduction of ordinance number two. Do I have a motion and a second? Moved by Freeholder Vice President Siebold and second by Freeholder Bobadilla. Um, Mr. McInerney, do you have any questions or comments? No, Okay, Mr. Polivacchio, questions, comments? No, this is related to uh, one, two, and three that Mr. McInerney Okay, very good. Uh, question, comments again, Freeholders? No questions, no comments. Um, roll call, Madam Clerk. Freeholder Beasley, absent. Freeholder Bobadilla? Yes. Freeholder Clark? Yes. Freelder Gill? Yes. Freelder Johnson? Yes. Freelder Luciano? Yes. Freelder Owens? Yes. Freelder Vice President Sebo? Yes. Freelder President Watson? Yes. So moved. Okay, we'll move to introduction of ordinance number three. Um, Madam Clerk, please read it. Introduction of ordinance number three. Ordinance authorizing the execution or acknowledgement and delivery by the County of Essex, New Jersey of certain agreements in connection with Essex County Improvement Authorities not to exceed 68 million dollars project consolidation revenue refunding bond series 2014 and authority refunding project associated therewith okay Phil's do I have a motion and a second and I will motion uh, ordinance number three do I have a second second freeholder Johnson um, mr. McInerney do you have any questions or comments okay mr. Pauli Vecchio Question, comments, preholders? No questions? No comments? Roll call, Madam Clerk. Freeholder Vice President Siebel? Yes. Freeholder Owens? Yes. Freeholder Luciano? Yes. Freeholder Johnson? Yes. Freeholder Gill? Yes. Freeholder Clark? Yes. Freeholder Bobadilla? Yes. Freeholder Beasley absent. Freeholder President Watson? Uh, yes. So moved. Okay, for the viewing audience and those that's in the uh, chambers, this evening, this is our regular board meeting. Last week, we had our conference meeting, and most of the, the items that you will see us voting on, we um, discussed it at the last meeting. And again, as I stated, this is the board me our board meeting that we'll be voting on all of the items that's before us. So, Madam Clerk, we will move to Resolution 1 and 2. And would you read Resolution 1, please? Resolution 1, Superintendent of Elections, Commissioner Registration Contract with Dominion voting systems to provide maintenance and repair, including parts, and the annual uh, WINES, uh, W-I-N-E-D-S, uh, 4.0 software license for the election management system amount not to exceed $100,115. Okay, Mr. Shiala, I know uh, the board, we had several questions on this resolution last week, and um, you provided, you provided us with a memorandum, do you want to discuss that or give additional information on the memorandum before the board? Uh, yes. Yes, Madam President, thank you. Um, we did spend uh, some time after last week's meeting uh, to review this with the uh, Commissioner of Registration as well as our purchasing department. And uh, as what was discussed last week actually was in fact the case, that when the machines were originally purchased, uh, it did include five years of prepaid uh, licensing software uh, at 30000 a year, and that five-year period of 150 
was paid up front during the original purchase. Uh, since that time, uh, thereafter, every year, uh, the superintendent of election through the purchasing department had secured this service under the omnibus purchasing resolution. Uh, and as we all know, the, the election and services are all bid exempt, which qualified and falls under the, uh, the omnibus resolution. Uh, for some strange reason this year, uh, the superintendent's office had anticipated that same mechanism. Uh, purchasing had requested that they go out for bid for this particular item. Uh, not fully aware of its previous history in, in, uh, in the county in terms of the omnibus. Um, therefore, that resolution uh, for approval was late getting to this board, but the expenditure under the omnibus is permissible, and uh, that has been the way that this county has secured that service in previous years. I'd like to just point out also that the contract of $100,000 includes uh, $38,000 roughly for the licensing of the software. Uh, it also includes, as needed, uh, $18,000 for any parts that are required. And in the event that the, uh, the superintendent of elections uh, requires for any refurbished or new machines, there is an allocation or a portion of the contract uh, of 44000 So this particular contract has three prongs to it. One is the actual software license renewal. One is for parts. And the third is for actual uh, new or refurbished <coughs> voting machines. Thank you. Okay, free holders, um, the information that we requested is before you. Do you have any additional questions that you uh, need to ask uh, Mr. Shiela? Questions, free holders, comments? Uh, yes. Mr. McInerney? <coughs> with, with regard to uh, not only the, this contract, but also other contracts, I'm just a... a the purchasing agent now dictates that these type of contracts uh, still have to go out to bid. So what I'm a little concerned about, and I'm sorry to bring this up at the last meeting, I don't expect an answer from the administration, but we'll uh, speak to the purchasing agent about is what other contracts uh, for uh, this amount, $100,000, have gone through the omnibus process that haven't come before the Board of Free Orders. So I think we might have a little bit of a different idea of what's going through the omnibus resolution. And if $100,000 bid contracts are going through there, we're not seeing them, I think we have to review that process and see whether or not that's something that we find acceptable. Uh, I'm, my, I'm, I don't believe there's a lot of them, but, but again, I will check with purchasing and I will, uh, I will follow and ask them to produce any contracts of any magnitude, maybe 50,000 or more, or 25,000 or more, whatever we deem uh, material, uh, to see what hasn't come before the board, and to see if this process of going out to bid, even though it's on the omnibus resolution, is going to stay a policy of the purchasing department, which I think is important. We, we do not want to have contracts of this size being approved through the omnibus resolution without the specific contract coming to the board of free Absolutely. Thank you for your comments. Freeholder Johnson. Yes, Madam President, I would like to, uh, through you, have the clerk set up a purchase. I think we're due for one about this time to look into this and let them answer those questions. Okay. There we go. Um, that's a great idea. Um, Madam Clerk, would you proceed to set up the purchasing? The um, committee that we are trying to get <coughs> now with the agenda. Would this type of, would, these, would this come under that particular uh, agenda? Be, that should be set. <coughs> okay, so that would be two meetings then that we need to schedule. Okay, yep. Any additional questions, comments, freeholders? No, this is resolution one. We're still on the voting machine, resolution one. Oh, okay. uh, number 14, but resolution one. Right. Okay. Okay. Any additional questions, comments, freeholders? If not, um, I have a mover. 
Do I have a mover and second, Madam Clerk? No okay, freeholders, do I have a motion and second to move resolution one? I'm moving. Moved by um, freeholder Bobadilla. Do I have a second? I second. Second by freeholder Owens. Um, any additional question, comments, freeholders? If none, roll call, Madam Clerk. Freeholder Vice President Siebel. Yes. Freeholder Owens. Yes. Freeholder Luciano. Yes. Freeholder Johnson. Yes. Freeholder Gill. Yes. Freeholder Clark. No. Freeholder Bobadilla. Yes. Freeholder Beasley. Absent. Freeholder President Watson. Uh, yes. So moved. Okay, let's move to the next resolution. That's resolution two. Um, and we are reading into the record at a later time. Madam Clerk, let's take two, um, three, four, five uh, together, and we'll read uh, resolution two through five at a later time. Madam uh, Freeholders, do I have a motion and second to take resolution two, uh, three, four, and five together? Moved by Freeholder Gill, do I have a second? Second. <laughs> second by Freeholder Johnson, I come back. Okay, um, Freeholders, question, comments on two, three, Question comments on four, five. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Oh, okay. Question on five. No, no, it was on number three. Question on three. Freeholder clock. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Is that better? Yes. Okay. Mr. Chilala, am I? Is this a contract with the Essex County? Department of Public Works. In other words, we're getting Public Works is getting paid. Uh, three, public Works is paying this amount. Uh, three, Madam President, uh, as as uh, in many years uh, under our Community Development Block Grant Program, there are unexpired funds, and during the course of a year, uh, our Housing Community Development Office will go out for a second round of RFPs, which uh, people are able to compete for. Our Public Works Department uh, submitted a proposal specifically for this road work uh, on Grove Street and Springfield Avenue in Township of Irvington. They were the successful uh, submission, they won it. and they are awarded a contract through our community development uh, office. That's good. That's very good. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, additional question, comments, freeholders? None. Roll call, Madam Clark. Freeholder Vice President Siebel. Yes. Freeholder Owens. Yes. Freeholder Luciano. Yes. Freeholder Johnson. Yes. Freeholder Gill. Yes. Freeholder Clark. Yes. Freeholder Bobadilla. Yes. Freeholder Beasley absent. Freeholder President Watson. Uh, yes. So moved. Okay, you can read a resolution six, Madam Clerk. Okay. Resolution six, Department of Corrections approval of one year renewal option to the shared services agreement between the County of Passaic and the County of Essex for the provision of supervision and security by Essex County for Passaic County inmates, detainees in the secured medical unit at East Orange General Hospital. Okay, um, freeholders, do I have a motion to move resolution six? I'll move it. Moved by freeholder Bovadia. Uh, Freeholder Owens, did you second this yes, resolution? Thank you. We uh, question comments, freeholders, on resolution six. None. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Freeholder Beasley absent. Freeholder Bobadilla. Yes. Freeholder Clark. Yes. Freeholder Gill. Yes. Freeholder Johnson. Yes. Freeholder Luciano. Yes. Freeholder Owens. Yes. Freeholder Vice President Siebel. Yes. Freeholder President Watson. Uh, yes. So moved. Okay, um, let's take resolutions 7 through 13, Madam Clerk. Uh, we'll take those resolutions together and we'll read it into the record at a later time. Um, do I, freeholders, do I have a motion and a second to take resolution 7 through 13, move moved by free, Freeholder Vice President Siebold, and do I have a second? Second by Freeholder Johnson. Um, question, comments, freeholders on 7. Eight. Yes, Freeholder Vice President. Uh, thank you very much. If you uh, read through the resolution, you will see the minutes from the March 27th meeting of the Open Space Trust Fund Advisory Board. And we interviewed 22 towns, all the towns in Essex County, although Caldwell and West Caldwell uh, partnered 
and as did uh, Glenn Ridge and Montclair. And we sat through and interviewed uh, each proposal from every single town so that we saw exactly what they wanted to do. And you, have the, you should have the list of everything that they proposed. And we gave them each $150,000. And we were very pleased with the work that is going to be done in all of the communities. So it is with enthusiasm that I have uh, uh, moved all of these resolutions, including this particular one, which I think is really terrific. Very good. Additional questions, comments, preholders? We are on seven, resolution seven, eight. Resolution nine, 10, 11, 12. Resolution 13. And um, for the record, uh, 7 through 13 are all coming from the Department of Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Affairs. Uh, no further questions, comments, freeholders of uh, Freeholder Gill. Thank you, Madam President. Just on resolution number 12, I um, uh, want to um, congratulate the administration. I think that's great on the uh, hydroponic farmer training um, for the greenhouse. And just wondering through you, Madam President, and as that makes its way through the process, if, if we as a board just could be updated on how that's going, um, you know, once we get to that, to that point. Okay. Um, the request, uh, you is, um, Freeholder Gill is asking the uh, administration to keep the board uh, up to date on the progress of this particular project. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, Very good. Most no. certainly. In fact, we did respond. I think last week that same question came up and we did respond that we will keep the board updated on the uh, progress of that program. Fantastic. Okay. Additional question, comments, freeholders? We, um, that question was on 12 and 13 before I expo a vote. No questions, no additional comments. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Freeholder Vice President Siebel. Yes. Freeholder Owens. Yes. Freeholder Luciano. Yes. Freeholder Johnson. Yes. Freeholder Gill. Yes. Freeholder Clark. Yes. Freeholder Bovadia. Yes. Freeholder Beasley Allen. Freeholder President Watson. Yes. So moved. Okay, um, Madam Clerk, we'll take 14 through 16, read it into the record, read all, all of the resolutions into these resolutions to the record at a later time. Um, uh, we'll take resolution 14, first a motion and second three elders to take resolution 14 through 16 together, all coming from the Department of Public Works. A motion to take 14 and 16 together and it's moved by Freeholder Bobadilla and second by Freeholder Vice President Seabolt. The question? No, I was just going to say that 17 is a public work too. We're doing all of the Okay. Um, I don't care if you don't want Yeah, this was professional services. And these, okay, we could take it if you are requesting that we take resolutions 617 along with 14, 15, 16, and 17 now. Okay, let's add question comments on resolution 14. 15? 16? And resolution 17, the 14 through 16 is Department of Public Works. 17 is the professional service to provide uh, engineering and inspection services. That's a different type of a resolution. Well, we'll take them together. I don't think there's a problem. Uh, we have a mover and second, Madam Clerk. Yes, we do. Okay. In addition to questions, freeholders on 14, 15, 16, and 17. No additional questions. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Uh, Freehold uh, Beasley, absent. Freeholder Bobadilla. Yes. Freeholder Clark. Yes. Freeholder Gill. Yes. Freeholder Johnson. Yes. Freeholder Luciano. Yes. Freeholder Owens. Yes. Freeholder Vice President Siebel. Yes. Freeholder President Watson. Uh, yes. So moved. Okay, let's take resolution 18 and um, 19 together, Madam Clerk, and we'll read the resolutions 18 and 19 at, into the record at a later time. Um, do I have a motion and second, freeholders, to take 18 and 19 together? M moved by Freeholder Vice President. Moved by Freeholder Clark and second by Freeholder Owens. Question, comments, Freeholders on 18. 
Mr. McInerney, I'm, I'm looking at you. You just kind of let me know when, when I need to call on you. Thank you. Um, resolution 18. Resolution 19. Uh, Freeholder Owens. What is the amount that the grant and award, the amount of service homes grant award of resolution agreement? How does that work? Okay, Mr. Um, Shiala, you, uh, Freeholder Owens is questioning resolution 18, Freeholder Owens? Yes. Could you explain that again for us? Um, I, I thought you said 19, but either one. E 18, oh. yeah, 18. Uh, we at our, this board has already inserted these dollars uh, for 18 under the Community Service Block Grant Program. Uh, this board has already okay. inserted $323,863 as well as the subgrant awards and for resolution 19 uh, the funds of one million six hundred seventy eight thousand nine hundred seventy two dollars have already been inserted and the subgrant awards have already been approved these two items are just housekeeping resolutions uh, for the state okay Freeholder Clark yes Madam President do you Mr. Chilalo, that, that also means that we've gotten our notice of obligation, so these funds are, 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 are in and we can count on them. Uh, through Madam President, yes, these funds have been uh, inserted, uh, awards have been made to the various providers, and I'm, uh, I'm pretty sure they are submitting for reimbursements and getting their checks. That's, a, that's good. If I might just and to a little bit, Freehold. not to, to, I mean, Mr. Chalala did a, a great job of explaining, but uh, Freeholder owns that, that means that some of the services that people need, they can get them because now they can start um, submitting their reimbursement to the county because the county now has dollars in place to pay. Very good. Um, no additional questions, comments, freeholders? Roll call, Madam Clerk. Freeholder Vice President Siebel. Yes. Freeholder Owens. Yes. Freeholder Luciano. Yes. Freeholder Johnson. Yes. Freeholder Gill. Yes. Freeholder Clark. Yes. Freeholder Bobadilla. Yes. Freeholder Beasley, absent. Freeholder President Watson. Uh, yes. So moved. Okay. Um, Madam Clerk, let's take resolution 20, 21, 22, and 23 together. We are reading the resolution to the record at a later time. Um, freeholders, do I have a motion to take resolution 20 through 23 together? I'll move that, Madam President. Moved by Freeholder Luciana. Do I have a second? Second by Freeholder Bovadia. The first resolution is Resolution 20, for question, comments, and insertion of items of revenue. Um, question, comments, freeholders? No? Let's move to Resolution 21. One question. Freeholder Clark. Um, did we, um, did we check to see that this is the act, absolute uh, best that we're able to get in terms of um, pricing on the um, the pharmaceuticals. We, did we see if, if we could, if there's any way that we could drive any of that pricing down? Interestingly enough, one of the things that made me think about pharmaceuticals was our own program, the one we have with PROAC. Mm -hmm. And did we actually consult them or anybody else to see if we could get um, perhaps uh, some better price points? Uh, through you, Madam President, uh, no, we did not consult with uh, PROACT. Uh, however, uh, this was a public bid. Uh, we did receive seven bids from uh, 31 potential bidders. So. Uh, we did have many people interested in this bid and submitting uh, bids on it. So uh, the marketplace uh, pretty much flushed out uh, the lowest price on this particular pipe. Um, and that's pretty much what we're presenting to the board tonight. 
Uh, I think Proact is a different, um, a different firm that uh, deals with pharmaceuticals on a global basis in a much different environment. These are strictly just over-the-counter, not really uh, pharmacy drugs that are prescribed. So uh, these are pretty much just uh, simple uh, drugs. Gotcha. And, and so, I mean, an aspirin is an aspirin kind of thing. Yes. Um, and just, you know me, Ralph, I'm just curious as to what the markup is on the aspirin. I mean, if we're getting the best price we can get for it. Um, because we have to get them. It's not, like we, it's not like we have much of a choice. But, you know, maybe we can... Uh, through you, Madam President, I know in your package you do have a matrix that will that has the, uh, the over-the-counter uh, drug or uh, item and the, the cost. So you can kind of look at that and, and, and get a, a pretty good feel as to uh, the cost of aspirin uh, that the county is paying. Um, may I suggest that the next time you do it, since, you, um, since we're a part of NACO, that whole, um, that whole uh, group, you might get better price points and better pricing with the if you pro, if you purchase it through the U.S. communities uh, cooperative purchasing. I suspect you're going to save something. How much is it going to be? Fifty thousand dollars? Is it going to be ten thousand? Is it going to be five hundred? I don't know. Um, but go ahead and, and check with them just to see because you might get some better price points. Good point. Okay. <clears throat> Freeholder Luciana. Uh, just through you, Madam President. Um, just for Ralph and the administration, a quick question. I know I had moved this, but for the record, um, the amount of cars is pretty significant, Ralph. I was just wondering, have we replaced all these cars? Um, I mean, I think we're talking like 40 or 50 cars here. That's a lot. I, I had originally thought it was more like a handful. Okay, we are on 22. I think oh, Clark's I question was on 21. Yes. I didn't move to 22 yet. I just wanted I to know. We <laughs> yeah, we are. I, I just want to take question right. comments on on them separately. But if you you have a question on 21 freeholders before I move to 22 for freeholder Luciana, no additional questions. Okay, freeholder Luciana. Now we are on resolution 22 for questions. Um, Thank continue. you, Madam President. Again, Thank yeah, you. just the significant amount of cars I was just wondering are we going to need to replace these have they been replaced um, are they deemed not necessary in our fleet uh, three madam president uh, in, on, in your package you do have the list of the 45 decommissioned vehicles many of them have already been replaced uh, and they have exhausted the <coughs> useful life of uh, these vehicles so uh, majority of them uh, if not all of them have already been replaced or are in the process of being replaced. Thank you, Ralph. Thank you, Madam President. Oh, okay, very good. Um, Freeholder um, Bobadilla? Uh, we're on the subject of cars. I just wanted to <laughs> say that I, I did contact uh, Ralph, and uh, with his support, we're actually going to schedule a meeting with uh, some. Uh, personnel in the city of New York who are into hybrid fleet management and uh, who are going to give us a hand in uh, best practices models to look into this, you know, as we move the county forward into not only a greener space, but obviously a very cost-saving uh, application of uh, looking at vehicles. So I just want to thank uh, Ralph for his support on that. Very good. Additional questions, freeholder comments. We are on now um, resolution 23 for questions, comments. No additional questions or comments. And again, for the viewing audience, we're moving the agenda fast and we're voting tonight because this is our regular board meeting and we did discuss most of these items in our conference meeting last week. Uh, roll call, Madam Clerk. We are voting on resolution 20 through 23. Freeholder Beasley, absent. Freeholder Bobadilla? Yes. Freeholder Clark? Yes. Freeholder Gill? 
Yes. Realder Johnson. Yes. Realder Luciana. Yes. Realder Owens. Yes. Realder Vice President Siebel. Yes. Realder President Watson. Uh, yes. So moved. Okay, let's uh, go to resolutions 24 through 41, Madam Clerk, resolutions, uh, commendations, and we'll take them together as one, and you may read them into the record at a later time. We also have a motion and a second to take resolution 24 through 41 to get uh, real Vice President Siebold. Yes, I, I just have a question. Unless I, I uh, didn't catch it, I made a presentation for the Healthcare Professionals Recognition Ceremony to Dr. Renee Baskerville, but she is not on the list. Did I miss it? I think you did. That was last week, wasn't it? No, that, no all that on, was this week. They're all on tonight. Essex County Healthcare Professionals Recognition Award. Do I have the correct event? Yes, you do have the correct event. Um, I didn't see her name. Madam President, I will correct that at omission. Thank you. Okay, the one omission that would be go under resolution as the omission is to show under resolution 41 as. Uh, I'll be happy to move all of them. But does that mean it will include her also? Yes. yes. Okay, thank you very much. And that resolution will be added. All. Okay, Freeholder uh, Vice President Seepold is asking to move the uh, commendation resolutions. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Freeholder Owens. Discussion, any further discussion on the resolutions, Freeholders, commendations? None. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Freeholder Vice President Seepold. Yes. Freeholder Owens. Yes. Freeholder Luciano. Yes. Freeholder Johnson. Yes. Freeholder Kill. Yes. Freeholder Clark. Yes. Freeholder Bobadilla. Yes. Freeholder Beasley absent. Freeholder President Watson. Uh, yes. So moved. Okay. Um, Madam Clerk, are there the added starter resolutions? Uh, Madam President, there are none. Um, we'll go to report of board committees. We did have one committee meeting that we received the report on that Freeholder Johnson reported. Do we have any additional uh, board committee's report? No additional rep board reports, committee's report. We'll go to leg legislative reports. Uh, written communications. Unfinished business. New business. Okay, Madam Clerk, let's move to the public comment session. If any member of the public would like to address the board on any issue, please come to the microphone and state your name and affiliation again, and you have a total of three minutes to speak. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Douglas Freeman, 525 Place in New Jersey. Um, do you, Madam President, um, refer to Resolution 8? I want to find out more information about the 2014 Local Aid Grant Program for Parks and Recreation. Okay, very good. All right. Th that information will be sent to you. And also, uh, I sent correspondence to your office to have a meeting and uh, wait for a response back. I would like to uh, talk to you privately. Okay, you sent the letter to me one on one? Uh, did, through the clerk's yeah, office? Please. Okay, and you're requesting a meeting yes. to meet with me? Okay, you will receive a, uh, a response to that request. Do I have any other, anyone yes. else from the public? Please come to the you microphone. Take your time. Please take your time, thank you. Ed Wadu, citizen, East Orange. Orange, rather, and also a member of the Weekway Park Sports Authority. As a member and a partner with the county, we have some terrible situations at Weekway Park. Number one, we have a senior cafe that's supposed to be feeding the senior, senior citizens on a daily basis. And they claim they can't get the floor done so that the people can move in and serve meals. We had meals started uh, last Friday. We served over 80-something meals to seniors from Dayton Street and those, those senior citizens' projects there. 
that was striving. And since then, the kitchen has been closed. There's one key. Nobody can get in to do the floors or do whatever they say is necessary. But they were done once. We don't know how finity they're going to be. But when 80-something people come and we gave out of food, they had a good time. Secondly, the people that visit Weekway Park and run the track, we got three feet of water on both sides of the track. As you come in the uh, Meeker Avenue side and also on the 22 uh, uh, highway side, the people are just running around. There's three feet of water. You spend a million dollars to repair that track twice in two years and it's going to rot only because of neglect. Thank you. Okay. Again, thank you for your comments and as always we will respond to all comments in writing. Um, do we have anyone else from the public who would like to speak? Please come to the microphone. State your name and affiliation and you have three minutes to speak. To shift our funding priorities, national and state policy makers will have to choose cost-effective criminal justice policies and focus on public safety strategies that curb crime and reserve more of our tax dollars for our, our children's education. Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger of California noted in his 2010 State of the State Address, spending 45% more on prisons than universities is no way to proceed into the future. What does it say about any state that focuses more on prison uniforms than on caps and gowns? Only when we make meaningful investments in schools, not prisons, will our nation reap the benefits through increased earnings for families, reduce unemployment, increase tax revenue from more vibrant local economies, reduce reliance on public assistance, increase civic engagement, and improve public safety outcomes for neighborhoods at risk of the violence and victimization. Very good, thank you. Um, Freeholders, do you have any comments at this time? Yes, Freeholder Vice President. Thank Steve you Bowen. very much. Uh, tomorrow, in honor of Jewish Heritage Month, I'm going to be making a presentation in the Freeholder Chambers at five o'clock. And I am hoping that as many people as possible can be attendance to show support for Jewish Heritage Month and I'm honoring two people, Lori and Stephen Klinghoffer, who are very, very active, both in the Jewish community and in the community at large. So I hope to see all of you there tomorrow at five o'clock. Thank you. Very good. Additional comments, Freeholder free Clark. Thank you. Um, uh, hopefully, if I can make it, I'm going to. That means that, that we'll all be able to be a little bit Jewish tomorrow, and that's a good thing. Sometimes we're and <laughs> sometimes, it's exactly, so tomorrow. African-American, we and have to be everything. Don't it. forget, this is a diverse county. That's it. And um, that helps me segue into my comments. Um, Madam President, you know, tonight we talked about the, um, the report and um, uh, from minority, a uh, firm of action committee or whatever. Um, I just did some quick math tonight. Over $2 million we voted on tonight. None of the contracts went to minorities or minority-owned firms. We have the uh, Affirmative Action Committee. We've had it now for the last, I guess, 10 years. I've been a member of the board for 12. We've had it ever since the disparity study. And in all honesty, I just don't see the, the relationship between having the office, the expense of having the office, having a point person, and the wonderful programs that are done and the number of people who get contracts. And I know you said that it's not necessarily about the contracts, but Madam President, it is. At the, at, the, at the end of the day, 
The bottom line is that it is. Because we voted on $2 million worth of contracts. So it's definitely about the contracts for the people who got them tonight. And I would imagine that for the people who come to those programs, they would love to, at some point in time, be able to get a contract. Now, the other thing I agree with you wholeheartedly is that the county cannot be that entity to give contracts to every, everybody. To Can't do it. It's not them. possible. Mm -hmm. But the county has a WIB. We have a Workforce Investment Board. We have other kinds of things. And the, the program that was held there where you had different people coming mm -hmm. in who weren't necessarily a, a county uh, person, but they were, they were private companies that could hire other vendors. That's the kind of stuff we need to really be doing more of, trying to match up and trying to do some more joint ventures and partnerships, because that's the only way that this is going to work for people to be able to get things going again, because it's a tough economy out there. And the jobs aren't there. And Essex County can't be the only vendor. Ralph, Joe, Phil do a great job of hiring people, individual people. They do what they can. They hire a lot of people. But at the end of the day, the people who have these companies, if we don't, ah, I'm leaving here. And the one thing that I really, really wanted us to be able to get our hands around, I'm not sure we've grasped it. And that is that if we don't create something or help to create something that's outside of government that can help people, then what the heck have we done? Because government can't do it all. The Hall of Records can't hire everybody. But a company, can. And the companies that we fund to the tune of two, billion, two million dollars, you mean to tell me some of them can't hire some people? They just ought to. That's what this whole thing should be about. They got to hire somebody, and they need to hire somebody from Essex County. They're getting Essex County's money. Like Forrest, like Forrest Gump said, that's all I've got to say about that. Freeholders, any additional comments? Freeholder Owens. Uh, Madam President, to the uh, other freeholders, my comment is about Weequake Park. And Weequake Park has been, since I've been on this freeholder board, uh, sort of a sore thumb somewhere along the line that we can't seem to get this park regulated and the things done there that I think are necessary. Now, with this water, I've seen this myself because I dry, I'm in that area. And I've seen this flood, and I don't know what it takes to get this type of situation cleared up. You can't get in the park, basically, to what other facilities that they have because of the floods that, that are right in front of the park. This is on the Mika Avenue side. And I don't know, uh, Ralph, I don't know, I spoke with you, and I spoke with Dan, and I spoke with Joe and everybody else to try to see that these type of things are, should be pr priority, to, as far as I'm concerned, to get done and out of the way so that people can use the park. And that's my comment. Okay. We can can, can we do more that, to get this park facilitated so that people can use it? It's a beautiful park and it needs to be, <coughs> and these, there's things that really need to be done there. Mr. Shiela? Uh Thank you, Madam President. We normally respond in writing, but uh, this is a critical issue. I've been down there, I've seen it for Every time it rains or the storms back up, uh, it's not a really quick fix. It's not really just an Essex County Parks Department problem or the Board of Trozen Freeholders or a county executive. Uh, this is a City of Newark and Essex County problem. Uh, we've been trying to work with Newark on alleviating the storm drains when they back up and that creates the flooding problem. So it's, it's not a flooding issue that the county has created. It's an issue that we've got to work with our partners on correcting. Um, our engineers have been working on some type of uh, quick fix, uh, have you, so that when you do have that quick flooding and stuff, uh, those storm drains uh, 
can be flushed, jet fl flushed out. Uh, but the, the problem is a much more extensive capital project uh, that entails the city of Newark, not the county of Essex. Uh, we are partnering. We're trying to do everything we can because it affects us. It affects our park. It affects entranceway into that park. Um, and we're very well aware of what the problem is, and I think this issue has come up over the years. Mm -hmm. And through the years, we've been able to do quick fixes on it, but again, it's a storm drain backup issue uh, that, is, that is not a, an easy fix for the County of Essex proper. And I hope that at least answers uh, the concern or the problems that it's not as if we're, we're not addressing it. It's, uh, we just can't go in and redo storm drains uh, and it, they're below, our, that entranceway is below the flood elevation so that when the floods do occur and the Newark streets and the storm drains, it has no place but to go onto our property. It's almost like New Orleans. Where they built the city and the water is above it. Uh, so it, it's, it's a serious problem. We acknowledge it's a serious problem and, and we will do everything in our powers, uh, quick fixes, to pump the water, do what we can to address this. But I, I just want to make everyone well aware that it's a major, major capital undertaking um, by government. You know, Ralph, and I understand what you're saying very much. Um, I used to live in that area. I used to live over there. And I used to have to come down uh, Meeker Avenue. And before it was Meeker Avenue, and the water was sometimes five feet high. You couldn't get your car, and you had to go another way because the water ran. Now it seems though that same flood that was that you can go down Meeker Avenue now, even in the water when when it's raining or when, when you have storms. But now it seems that moved from from there over into the park. I don't know how that works, but that seems to what what has happened. Because I used to drive. I lived there for a long time in that same area. And I had to go up and down Meeker Avenue, and there was always floods there. Now it seems as though the, that same flood has moved into Weekway Park, and um, I don't know how they fixed it on Mika Avenue, but I'm, I'm hoping that, and I'm, I'm not blaming the county for it. It's, it's, flash floods can happen anywhere, you, you know, that's a, that's a thing that happens. And uh, they go up and they come down, but this one in Weekway has really been, um, it, 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 floods make accommodations tough for everyone, and it really makes it tough for people in the park. I hope that we'll find a way to resolve this. Thank you. Okay, uh, freeholders, additional comments at this time? None? Okay, um, Mr. Shiela, um, we will respond to the other question in writing. Um, anytime the freeholders ask a question, I'd like to get the response from them if we can. Um, and that was an important response. We needed to respond to that question about the flooding. No additional comments, freeholders, or information that you'd like to share at this time. Um, announcements, the Agenda Review Committee as a whole, uh, one of our new committees that we um, recently formed, um, will be held, that committee meeting will be held June 17th, 4.30, and I want to encourage every freeholder to be at that meeting. This is a very crucial um, meeting. Um, I, I decided to put this committee together for a reason and I'm asking that all freeholders make every effort to attend this meeting. It's, it's going to be important because there's going to be some things that will be discussed and some suggestions that will be brought to this board for the future in reference, reference to the agenda. So we need to make sure that we attend. Um, the Work First Committee meeting is, will be held June 24th. And Freeholder Clark, that meeting you have scheduled for 3 o'clock. Um, and it will be held in room 506. And also the Agenda Review Committee meeting uh, will also be held in room 506. Um, oh, just let me just uh, um, announce that we had um, a plaque um, uh, today presented to the Durkin uh, family um, 
in, mem mem in memory of um, Tom Durkin. And it was really, really beautiful. His wife and family was most appreciative of the county. And of course, the freeholders, um, to always make sure that when we present these type of commendations and plaques and statues, that is always done also in, in behalf of the freeholders also. So um, it was a, a beautiful ceremony, and um, I'm sure the family will be, will be forever grateful to the county executive and the freeholders for making sure that we, um, this county, never forget Mr. Durkin. Um, let me just give the freeholder questions and public comments on ordinance number one, first reading, the budget consultant asks the administration to provide a report, and this is from our freeholder meeting of May 21st, where we always say we respond to questions in writing, and I always, the following week, I'll make a report on how the questions went. The question that was posed by our, our consultant, Frank McInerney, the memo was sent to the administration on the 22nd, and we received the response on the 23rd. Mr. McInerney, you should have received that. Very good. Um, freeholders, Robonda Bobadilla uh, suggested that a Skype conference call for Dominion voting systems. Um, the memo was sent to the administration on the 22nd. And for freeholder Bobadilla and freeholders, you should have received that information today in your package. On the budget consultant, McInerney asked for the county license to use the software Aspire. That was the, the, the item we voted on um, tonight. That memo went out to the administration on the 22nd. We uh, received the response on the 23rd. And Freeholder Council Michael Polivecchio asked for contract information regarding the local vendor in North Bergen who was and is providing maintenance service for the voting machines when it was awarded and when it expired. That information we went to the administration on the 22nd. We received the response on the 23rd. And multiple, multiple freeholders expressed a wish to have the local North Bergen vendor appear before the board. That memo was sent to the administration on the 22nd and the response on the 23rd. Resolution 5, Freeholder Clark asks that a meeting of the Workforce Review Committee be scheduled. Um, the memo was sent to the administration on the 22nd. I just read the meeting date that is being scheduled uh, at the request of Freeholder Clark. That meeting is scheduled for the 24th. Um, Freeholder Clark in Resolution 12 last week suggested that the administration be sure to advertise the hydroponic greenhouse and its produce to county residents once the program is up and running. And I think that was something Freeholder Gill also suggested. Um, this evening, uh, the memo sent to the administration on the 22nd, the response on the 23rd. Freeholder Owens and Freeholder President Blonnie Watson asked the administration to be sure to consider the playground equipment in Weekway Park for appropriate repairs and replacement under this contract that we voted on. Um, the memo was sent on the 22nd, the response on the 23rd, so Freeholder Owens, that response should be in your package on, on the playground equipment that we requested. Um, Wayne Richardson from 236 Vassar Avenue, Newark, expressed his hope that some of the money in Resolution 40 will be used in Weekway Park not only for the playground, but also to address persistent flooding at the Mega Avenue entrance to the park, to repair holes in the rubberized track, and to cut back the overgrown bush that overhangs the track. That memo was sent to the administration on the 22nd. The response we received on the 23rd. The letter will be sent out to Mr. Richardson on May 27th. That ends all of our questions and public comments from last week and the responses that we presented this evening. And before we leave this evening, um, I would like to announce if those of you that did not hear yet that Port Arthur Mayor Angelo dies at 86 Wednesday morning at her home in Winston, Salem, North Carolina. And if you will allow me to ask for just a brief moment of silence. Thank you. And with that, freeholders, do I have a motion to adjourn? Yes.